So in this video, we're gonna go over how we set up the four link, the shock absorbers, and also scale the car on our Project RX-7 drag car. So the suspension in racing is obviously a very critical component. It'll dictate how the car behaves on the road, so you can have as much horsepower as you want, but if you can't put that horsepower to the ground, it's useless. Easiest way to articulate how that works is by your tires and also your suspension. So we've got some Mickey Thompson Pro Radial Drag Radials up the back of this thing, some ultra skinny front runners here as well, because this is primarily used for drag racing, of course. Uh, we also have a four link kit, which is supplied by Pro9 and also Shockworks uh, coilovers at the front and rear of the car. So today we're primarily only going to look focusing on the rear end setup of this car. So four link, we're going to talk about things like instant center, uh, center of gravity, and then we're also going to scale the car and see what changes in things like the anti-roll bar or changes to bar angles and things like that may make at difference in terms of vehicle weights and corner weights and how we may want to set it up. Now, in terms of how we're going to be setting up this car primarily, with drag racing and a falling setup, there's probably two styles uh, of setup you'd normally see. You'll see one where the rear end squats uh, and, and squats down and the body becomes lower to the ground. Or you may see often uh, where a setup is, right, the body is raising from the ground, so to speak. So you'll often see radial tire cars, um, normally pushing the body away from it to, and then pushing the tire down. And you'll normally see slick tire cars uh, push the body down to squash the tire into the ground. So depending on what setup you have in terms of the tire you're using, will have a big, um, big change into how you set up the rear of the car. So I'm gonna go over basically how I've set up this car. This is a radial tire car, so we want that body separation. So how we're gonna set up those four link bar angles and some of the shock setups will be primarily around that. All right, less talking, more action. Let's uh, take a look under the car and some of these components and then uh, start working. So before we get started on uh, putting the diff in, you're probably wondering how you go about setting the bar angles and whatnot. So uh, for a radio prep car like this one, I've just started uh, with a ballpark traditionally around sort of 10 to 15 degrees on a, on a sort of downward angle like that, so to speak, for the top bar and the lower bar hitting on an, an upwards angle uh, of around about three to four degrees. So yeah, the lower bar when you're setting up realistically is there to set up your wheelbase and where the diff actually sits in the car. And then the top bar is almost what you use to um, play around with the pinion angle. So if we find the pinion angles, we basically set the lower bar where it needs to be now. And um, that's exactly where we want the diff. But if we find the pinion angle when we put the bar in now, it's not quite right. We can use that top bar just to make uh, micro adjustments to make sure it's in the right place. So bottom bar for setting, you know, where you want the diff to be, top bar for setting pinion angle basically. And um, yeah, and then the rest you can just play around with the, the lengths of, uh, if you want to, to get the right, uh, right anti-squat percentage and things like that and get the uh, suspension doing what you need. So yeah, now let's do some measurements and uh, see what we can uh, come up with. All right, so welcome to the rear end of the RX-7. Uh, yes, understand this is meant to have an IRS rear end in it because it's a 1993 FD RX-7. However, this is for drag racing only, so we have a tried and true Ford 9-inch. Uh, some other components you'll see here are things like the anti-roll bar, the shock absorbers, uh, this diagonal bar, and at the front here, the four links. So in terms of what everything does here, this diagonal bar basically locates the diff from side to side and then stops it moving side to side. If I was to take this bar out, I could just move this differential from side to side um, and position it wherever I want. Or if this happened to break while we we're racing, uh, the diff will just go side to side crazy in that. So that's for side to side location. Uh, what we have here, this one here is our anti-roll bar, might be referred to as an ARB. Uh, you can see it's got two arms that come up here. They attach to the chassis. The other two, other two parts attach to the differential. You can see it's bolted in here. What this stops is the articulation of the body, essentially, and controls that. So normally the, when, you know, through force, the rear, the rear right might get pummeled by just, you know, this is the way the differential's turning, uh, the drive shaft's turning, so it may want to, you know, push down on, on one side of the car versus the other. Uh, some cars are more 
um, susceptible to it than others. But what this anti-roll bar uh, basically enables us to do is make sure that the rear end, both tyres are planted with the same kind of force to the ground at the same time. Because if you've got, say, more force being applied to this tyre than that one, then essentially you could get the car steering slightly to one side or that tyre being slightly unloaded and, and, and being able to brake traction a bit easier. So that's what the anti-roll bar does. Uh, in terms of what we're going to focus on more in this video, we have the four link bar. So you see the four link gets its name because you know it, it basically attaches at four points of the, of the vehicle. So we've got two on either side of the diff here and then um, two to the chassis. Uh, other common uh, suspension methods for attaching aftermarket diffs like this to cars may be a ladder bar. Um, those ladder bars are significantly longer. They can be 28, 30, 32 plus inches long. So in a car like this where I would have to cut a lot of the floor out, uh, the full link was a much easier method to go for. It's also a little bit more tunable in terms of I can change top bar angle and uh, lower bar angle independent from each other, which is uh, important as well. Uh, so we've got the full link and the other thing is obviously the shock absorbers. Now these are shocks from uh, an Australian company called Shockworks. You can see we've got the shock absorber, the adjusters down here, and then up the top here is um, is the external canister. So we've got a reservoir there which holds even more fluid, which enables um, yeah, the fluid not to heat up, but also more volume let, lets it uh, dampen it uh, significantly better. So these are an absolute uh, leading shock manufacturer in Australia, a great shock absorber. Now what you'll see also here is just for data. So this is just measuring shock travel. Uh, so at the moment, we're basically at sort of full extension, so to speak, you know, all the weight's being raised by the hoist and it's down. And what you can see is once we lower it, that this will lower and that's connected directly via these wires to our ECU and our data logger. And once we go down the strip, we'll be able to look at that data and understand how the shock absorber's moving because essentially the relationship between everything in the back here is the four link governs how, how the body moves or how the chassis moves versus to um, the differential and the shock absorber controls that movement. So you want a really good quality shock to be able to properly articulate and uh, that movement because if the fall link just wildly goes up and down, um, it's not going to be a good ride. You're not going to have traction. You're not going to go as fast as you want. So what the shock absorber does and what the adjustment points allow you to do is adjust for how it raises up and how it lowers down, which is uh, often referred to as compression or rebound. Um, in, in shock absorbers speak. Uh, so yeah, let's have a bit of a look at how now we go about setting up the fall link and a few other ang uh, angles like drive shaft angle and things like that. Now, what you will have noticed is we've got these wooden blocks here on the ground. Now, you might think, oh, you've got a hoist. What would you need You know those little stands for? Uh, the reason for the stands is because to measure all these angles and to set up the fall link and the shock absorbers, the, the vehicle needs to be, you know, the chassis and everything needs to be under its own weight. So it needs to be on solid ground essentially. So, but to get under the car to adjust the four link, you know, if this car was on the ground, I can't get under it at all. It's a very low car, uh, it's designed that way. So, you know, I won't be able to read the angles properly in that either. So what we do is we've made these uh, wooden blocks out of like 90 by 45, 90 millimeter by 45, um, essentially sort of two by four in, in Imperial language. Uh, and the, car will then sit under its own weight on those blocks, raised off the ground, um, you know, half a metre sort of thing. Uh, and I'll easily be able to crawl under now and we'll be able to look at all the angles with the vehicle on its weight. So it just makes it a hell of a lot easier to do the job. Let's lower the car down now and start looking at some of uh, the angles and, and what they all mean. So the information we need to get here uh, is pretty simple. We've got the front of the car, see so turbo, the rear car wing, obviously. So we need to get the height. And the weight, I've just got two weights here for kilograms and pounds uh, for left front, right front, rear, right rear. We've then we've got a split here, a percentage and weight. And then we need to calculate the anti-squat percentage and we need all these measurements. So we need wheelbase, so from he, the distance here to here, uh, we need upper bar lengths and lower bar lengths and then where those bolt hole points are as well. So uh, in terms of this anti-squat, what I'm talking about here is basically this is the imaginary anti-squat line and we'll have our four link brackets, you know, here and here and the ones on the chassis here and here. 
And depending on where those bars are and what the angle is, they will then produce a line. If, if you then keep on dotting the line out for the top bar and dot the line out from the bottom bar, they'll intersect somewhere. So just say theoretically it was there and that's above the anti-squat line. That. So we'll go over this in a bit more detail once we've got the, uh, the measurements, but let's get these measurements first now and then we can go to a calculator to do all that kind of stuff for us. Essentially the bolts we're gonna be measuring are this one right here, uh, this one here, the upper one there, and the one just out of shot that's just up the top of here. So basically the four points where it intersects. So all I'm gonna do is basically get a tape measure and measure uh, up to here. So if I get my tape measure out, all I'm doing is basically going to the center of these bolts uh, to the ground. Now, to the ground won't be my actual measurement. I will take out the height from the ground to these uh, pads uh, first, but I'll get all these measurements and then we'll reconvene back over at the notepad. All right, so let's just take a look at what we've got here, which is uh, a little calculator on our website called baselinesuspensions.com. I'll leave the link below in the description, but it's pretty much um, yeah, a website that has its own calculator. Essentially what we're gonna do now is those measurements that we took, we're gonna input here. They, these aren't my measurements, these are just the generic ones and that. So uh, some we can put in now, uh, let's see, the horizontal upper control arm length. Now, what's important here is, is control arm length isn't the actual length, uh, it's the parallel projected length across the horizontal axis. So if your bar sits like this, for instance, the length isn't across here, it's actually from here to here on a, on a horizontal axis and that. So. Well, if your bar's this long, um, it may, you know, the actual length of the bar uh, over the horizontal axis may be a bit less than that. But let's put some numbers in all this now and uh, discuss it after. All right, so all those numbers are input there. Let's calculate instant center. You can see on this car here, it's 111% anti-squat. This was the old settings that were in because I haven't clicked this yet. Um, what you can see now, these have quite long, it's quite long to the intersect point. This is the anti-squat line that we talked about, this line here. And this is the center of gravity. Um, so theoretically, that, that sort of center of gravity is that if you were to put a hook in the car right at that point there and hung it from the ceiling, the car would sit dead level, perfectly dead level. That is the exact center point of the center weight of the vehicle. So you can see the intersection point. You can see it's just above this line, which is just above the anti-squat line, which means that uh, the, the way the fall link will work will be the body will, will raise. So well, that's what, what we're looking for. We're looking for probably even a number higher than this 111. Um, so we want it further above this line, which means it'll, it'll extend even further up um, with more ease. So if we click uh, calculate instant center. Okay, wow. Um, so we have, <laughs> we have a number of 180%, um, which means that, yeah, we'd, it'll be well and truly uh, looking to to um, fling that rear rear end right that the chassis right off the um, right off the diff, which is is great. Uh, these numbers again are just uh, estimate numbers, and that uh, center of gravity may be completely different for it because this is based on camshaft height. You see here, uh, you can calculate this number out, which I may look to do later to actually calculate it. But um, yeah, it's based on the camshaft height. So uh, I've I've measured this just. I've sort of spitballed the number based on some measurements and that, so that, that number may not be accurately accurate anyway. So, you know, that, that has a fairly large bearing on all this anyway, but 180%, the main reason I do this now is I can say, okay, it is well and truly about the anti-squat line. When I go to the racetrack, what I should be seeing is the body separating from the diff quite a fair bit. Um, what I can do when I, after I race a few times, I can look at some camera work, I can look at my shock data and I can see, is that what it's doing? Um, and then based off that, if we've got a lot of anti-squat and maybe the, the shock's not controlling it um, as, as well as we want it to, we can um, re-change some of the shock uh, data because these shocks are a new setup for this as well. So we're, not, we're just sort of putting it in a ballpark of where we, it might work, but we don't know what the data is yet exactly for this setup. So uh, the shocks, we can go through a whole different range of setups and that to really dial in based on exactly where we want it. So uh, this is a good starting point just to basically tell us where it is in that. So um, yeah, all right, let's head back to the car. So here we go, it sort of says there, it's um, 
180% anti-squat. Now, those numbers are just indicative in that they're not actually um, you know, a, a hard and fast number. Our center of gravity may be much different because normally that, that estimate number there is sort of built off just wherever the, the camshaft line is on your engine. Obviously no camshaft uh, in here because it is a rotary. Uh, so it's just an estimate, the numbers are there, but the main thing that I want to use it for is uh, now we'll get vision of it at the racetrack, at it, well, it should be separating because it's obviously well and truly uh, above the anti-squat line. So with it, uh, yeah, seeing how much it separates and how much we can control that, now that if I make changes to, slight changes to bar angles or things like that, or ride height, using the exact same method with, um, with the pads and, and the stands and that here, I'll be able to use that same calculator, put the same, put you know numbers in again, and if I get a different result, it's still consistent. So it's not the fact that I'm saying like, oh wow, 180% anti squat, it should fly up on the rear end, and that it's it's more about getting a number and get an approximation of where it probably is on the anti squat line, maybe, and then repeatedly using that same calculator and the same method to get the same result. So that's all that is. Um, the shocks now, now we're set to right height. The main thing is that we'll um, look at some shock data probably in another episode once we can actually get some data at the racetracks, shock travel, some vision under there. So we'll really focus on that. We can talk to the guys at Shockworks about if we need to revalve it, what that might look like uh, and things like that. But the number one thing you may have tuned into this video to find out about is the how much this thing actually weighed all up. So let's go check that out right now. All right, without further ado, let's have a look. And uh, here it is. So this is in the, uh, well, it's in every country except for the US and some other country. Uh, weights there, we've got uh, basically a thousand, and call it 1,080 kg. Uh, can give it to you in uh, Imperial as well. And you, you see like 2380 pounds basically. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lightweight, absolutely lightweight. So I think from factory, these things weigh, they're, they're a very light car. I think they're about 1200 kilos factory. So right now we're 120 kilos less than the factory weight. Um, you know, we've got a rotary engine. They're pretty light. There's a lot of aluminum components around it. Uh, we've got lightweight racing wheels. Uh, it's, you know, all the interiors out, all the HVAC stuff, your air can, you know, all the AC and that out the front. We've got a radiator that's half the size and only aluminium. Uh, yeah, and then obviously we've got, you know, we've got the nine inch diff in it and people think obviously a nine inch diff, it's big and heavy, but it doesn't seem that way. So obviously with the IRS system, you'd have the rear cradle, you'd have the diff, all the arms and everything like that. So um, yeah, it, what would be really interesting would be if someone had a completely factory RX-7, um, you know, to put it on the on the scales and just see what that, that weighs at and, and to confirm that, you know, obviously all I can find on, online is, you know, websites that state the factory weight, but, you know, who knows if they're accurate or if they're even full of fluids or whatever like that. So, but yeah, I mean, again, it's just more about consistency. We know now where that weight is uh, and what we might need to do if we want to change it. Um, it looks like it's about 50, 3% on the nose, which is good. I want it to be nose heavy um, for the reason that separation again, more weight on the nose and further of even of the, the front axle, so to speak, will help it make sure it doesn't wheel stand. But also more weight on the front means it's easier to separate the body at the back and, and have that shock um, control it as well. So that pretty much does it for this. This is how I've set up the four link in, in my car. Um, and yeah, now we've corner weighted on that. So we go to another episode once we get some racing data on um, yeah how we further set up the shocks and tune the shocks to maximise its racing potential. So, till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.